All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good buddy, Justin Krebs. Justin is the co-founder of Living Liberally and Drinking Liberally. He is a campaign director at Move On and the author of the new book, Blue in a Red State, The Survival Guide to Life in the Real America, which you can find at blueinaredstate.com. Justin, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you for having me. It's such a delight. All right, so Justin, buddy, the new book is Blue in a Red State. Uh, let's just begin, let's discuss where did the idea for the book actually come from? Sure, Matt. Uh, the, the idea of Blue in a Red State came about because I met all these great liberals all around the country in the most conservative areas uh, as a result of my relationship with drinking liberally and laughing liberally and living liberally, this la national network of progressive social clubs. And as I've gotten a chance to meet some of the chapters and meet some of the local liberals in places like Idaho, South Carolina, and Texas, uh, I, I started to hear their stories and realizing that the experience that they're having as a liberal on an everyday basis is very different than what I am having living in Brooklyn, or maybe what you're having living in, in the Boston area. Uh, and that their stories were entertaining, were insightful, but also were, were really provocative, getting getting me to think about what it meant to be liberal, but also what it meant to to form relationships with people who hold different political values and what it means to navigate your daily life when you're in the political minority. So I went back to them and said, you've told me these stories once. How about now we make it an interview and we turn, a, turn it into a book? Yeah, it, what's so fun for me personally about the book is, uh, you know, you know, people who watch and listen to this show regularly know I'm very much part of the the Liberally Network through drinking liberally and laughing liberally. Um, and I know like a good three fourths of the people that are like each <laughs> chapter of the book. So it's like, and I and I know that I've heard some of these stories personally, but it, it, actually getting in, into depth with some of these people who are I consider like friends um, was was really really fun for me. Um, I guess let's let's dig into because. And because for me personally, I, I find the book great because, you know, why I live in Boston now and, you know, I've lived in New York City, I've lived in Chicago. I mean, you know this, I grew up in Nebraska, so I, I actually do know what it's like being a, a blue person in a red state, right? So let's just talk about some of the overall experiences and then we'll dig into to, to other, some of the people specifically. But sort of what are some of the overall arching themes that you got from talking to all of these different progressives and liberals in red areas? Absolutely. The, the, there are two overarching ideas. One is that liberals everywhere are the same, and the other is that liberals everywhere are different. Right. But let me unpack that for a moment. Yeah. Uh, on, on, a, on a basic level, whether you're in Nebraska or in, in Indiana or in Massachusetts or in California, the reason you identify as liberal or as progressive in, in America today is that you believe that we're all better off when we live for each other rather than when we live only for ourselves. It is this communitarian-minded, civic-minded, we're in this together attitude that is at the core of our values and at the core of a lot of the policies we believe and the people we elect and the movements we join and the media we read. That, that's at the core of it. And as I talk to people, whether they were in Alaska or in Kentucky, they kept coming back to that same message. That's not just a message for, for those of us who have those New York values, and those Boston values. I mean, those, those are, are values that a lot of folks share. But the other thing that I, I definitely heard is that the experience on a daily basis is very different. In, in New York, you are uh, uh, very confident in being a liberal. Not everyone cares about politics as much as you do. Not everyone is active. But you don't you don't have to worry about or wonder about when you can voice your, your feelings. In other parts of the country, they really do. You have people who don't want to talk about their politics at work because they fear retribution or just ostracization. Uh, they Maybe they go to a church and they don't want to talk about their liberal values at church because they do also have deep-seated Christian values that they see as working together with their liberal values, but they worry that their fellow uh, members of the congregation won't agree. And so you have this daily dance that folks do where they have to decide when do they speak up, when do they go quiet, when do they shout about their cause, when do they sometimes even pass, allow others to assume that they're conservative, just for the sake of making their daily lives work uh, and, and finding a way to be happy and to thrive in the communities where they're living. Yeah, it's a really interesting balance that, that 
you have to have in, in a lot of these areas where like you, you need to hold on to your values and what, what's kind of the, the core of who you are as a person. But you at the same time, if you're one of the few liberals or progressives in your entire town, you also still do have to like live with your neighbors, right? It's not like you, I mean, I guess you can like, you know, have a little, uh, you know, go in your back room and like type your manifesto or something like that. But that's not, I don't think most people would consider that a good way of living. Exactly. You, at the very least, you have to be able to tolerate and navigate your neighbors. But in a lot of these cases, the folks I talk to love their neighbors, even yeah. their conservative neighbors. They, they go on vacations with them. They watch each other's kids. Uh, there's a woman in Alaska who says it in a great way. She says, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm liberal. Everyone knows I'm a Democrat. I know that my neighbors are, are conservative, but we don't let it get too heated. When the next snowstorm comes through, one of us is digging the other one out of their driveway. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it, is that on a daily existence, you are helping each other out. And, and you're really forming some, some deep relationships. And so sometimes people do that by not talking politics at all. Other times, what becomes more interesting is that they try to find ways of engaging people on the level of values um, without getting caught up in the candidates or the issues of the news cycle. You know, if you start a conversation with someone saying, do you love Bernie, do you love Hillary, and they don't, you're going to be on opposite sides. But if you start a conversation with somebody about their family and about your family, and through that conversation it comes up that um, somebody has a son or a daughter or a nephew or niece that's gay or lesbian, it becomes these points of human contact that actually do open up uh, people to a different perspective that, that, that finds common ground that's deeper than politics. So, so a lot of these folks, I mean, are, are definitely, are, I mean, they're leaders in their communities in many cases. Even though they are the liberal outsider, they can still be the civic leader by being community members and PTA members and, and congregation members. Yeah, it's so interesting. And again, like this is, again, why I, I think I, the reason I actually love the Living Liberally organization so much is not, not for me living in Boston and having other progressives to be around. Because again, like you were saying earlier, you know, if you live in New York or, or Boston, most of the people around you are probably at least left of center for the most part. But you have these people who, who live in these, these communities and it makes me so happy that they're there and they're, and that they're, they're fighting for their values, even in, yeah. in these sort of like places that, it, that it's really, really hard where you have people who, uh, well, let's, let's get into some of them. You have people like uh, our friend Muxy, Lisa Muxworthy in Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, who is one, in one of the more like red areas of Wisconsin, uh, having to like, you know, have different Facebook profiles and all different stuff. So talk a little yeah. bit about some of our, some of the people you profile in the book. You have, you have Lisa in Waukesha, Wisconsin, very conservative part of Wisconsin. She and her husband will sometimes take a drive to Madison just because they say, honey, I feel like I need a little Madison today. <laughs> and it almost allows them to breathe easier. But there's a reason they're not living in Madison, that they're living in Waukesha. Some of it is, has to do with jobs and cost of living. Some of it has to do with the community that they found there. But, but absolutely, you know, the, uh, I think it was her story where they, well, at, sometimes at the gym they go to, they'll try to change the channel uh, for, above the running machines from Fox News to CNN, MSNBC, some other channel besides Fox News, and they'll get, they'll get dirty looks. Or you have folks down in um, Spartanburg, South Carolina, Al and Diane Chulek, their daughter Cass. They, they've moved around. They lived, uh, Al was originally from California. They lived in Arkansas for a long time. South Carolina really was a, 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 a truly Southern experience in a way that they weren't expecting. But now... As much as they feel like they're in the political minority, as much as they can't believe some of what they hear, they also say they wouldn't live anywhere else. They love it there, and as they say, it would kind of be boring to go live in Ithaca, New York, or Burlington, Vermont, where, where everyone's liberal. It kind of keeps you at your, at your sharpest when you're in a place that you can be doing some good. 